Glory Hound. This week and each week is brought to you by Game Toppers. Upgrade your gaming experience at GameToppersLLC.com. Welcome to Game All Night! Well, everyone, and welcome to Game All Night. Tonight, we are going to be joined by Glory Hound herself. That's right, straight from YouTube, the streaming, and all those other services. She is joining us tonight in studio. But really quick, uh, Dan's out of town, so I had to have a quick fill-in for Dan. So let's, uh, let's cut over to Canadian Dan. Tonight, I decided to do something interesting. I thought we could have a black velvet. Definitely different. This is just going to be a combination of a nice hot cider and Guinness stout. It's very creamy and definitely special. I know, it's quite tasty. I thought you might like that. It is. Thanks, Canadian Dan. Sorry. Sorry for anything. I'll let you get on with the show. I'm just going to sit over here in the corner and not say anything. Although Canadian Dan sounds like it could be British Dan a little bit, but hey... You know, you take what you can get. In any event, Glory Hound, you've been waiting in the green room long enough. How are we doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. I don't know, should I say Miss? I mean, you have Mr. Glory Hog, or Dr. Glory Hog, Dr. Right? Glory Hog, yes, yeah. Right, so, so are you Mrs. Dr. Glory Hog? Or like... <laughs> Mrs. Doctor? <laughs> You can apply as many titles to the front of that as you want, you okay. know. <laughs> DDS, MD, we'll just, we'll slap a bunch of letters on the end right? too. All right. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. But anyway, you graciously agreed to appear on our show and you're kind of um, one of these, uh, these, these streamer people, the people who don't record ahead of time and give yourself a cushion and and no, a, yeah and a safety net as it were <laughs> um you just let's just go right off the deep end and do everything live so is that correct is that a fair assessment <laughs> absolutely i love doing live stuff it's super dangerous though like that yeah you don't have time to think about things it's like fly by the seat of your pants like but it's so much fun interacting with people live. And I just, that's what drives me with that. I love talking to people live with playing games or even just talking about Kickstarters and stuff, you know? Cool. So you do, now you do this primarily on YouTube, correct? Well, I actually, I do it on all platforms. I multi-stream. I do it on awesome. YouTube and Facebook and Twitch. And I think that's it. <laughs> wow. That's still quite a lot. I mean, you're, you're not like, you're still doing a ton of stuff. You're putting it out there. I found, I usually find you mostly on YouTube because I didn't, Twitch is just kind of, it's a big scary nightmare for me. So I don't tend to go on there very often, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but what kind of content, if we were to go to your streams, what do you think our guests would find? Well, we always try to make sure that we put entertainment first, and then we also talk about board games, which is, I mean, I don't want to be like a dry person. Well, I'm not a dry person, and I don't want to talk about things dryly. Like, I want to put enthusiasm into board games, the same passion that I feel, and that is kind of where things go. You know, we talk about Kickstarters, but we also get sidetracked and talk about burritos and we talk <laughs> about the latest movie and stuff that's happening. And then when we play games as well, we're always talking back and forth with a lot of banter and stuff and making things super enjoyable. You know, I mean, if somebody would game with me in person, that's what you're going to see on stream because, you know, you got to go back and forth with banter and stuff like that. Like that's part of playing the game, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So the the fun part is is that you get to you get to just kind of figure it out live, and you get to have fun. So the chat is along there with you. How how helpful? I might use air quotes on that. How helpful is it to have chat while you're doing like live plays of things? And Oh my and goodness. Such? Well, okay. So first off with live chat, if you make a mistake in a game, 
you're going to know right away. Like if you were playing something wrong, somebody's going to tell you and you're like, oh, okay, sorry. We'll fix that right now. But having the live chat and having people interject and stuff and having people root for certain people while you're playing games and stuff. And, you know, I'll go back and forth with Dr. Glory Hog and somebody will say something very punny and chat and then we'll get to razz each other about those things. <laughs> and that just, it makes the game so much fun, you know? Absolutely. And, and I think um, the burning question is where is the, the love for Chipotle come from? Because <laughs> I don't right? think I can go one stream without, you know, a, a burrito trying to be thrown across the country. What, what's the deal with that? Well, on one of our streams, we started talking about everything in Chipotle burritos. So if you're going to either purchase a game or you're going to get a dinner. Okay. And we love eating at Chipotle because they have like all sorts of different options for everybody. And so now it's like you can buy this game, but then you're sacrificing X amount of Chipotle burritos <laughs> that you would actually eat at home. Okay. So you have to go back and forth and keep that in perspective with what you're doing. You know, is this game worth, you know, a date night worth of Chipotle burritos? <laughs> That's completely fair. I mean, they, they are good. I'm more of a bowl guy, but you know, are you? Just, <laughs> I am, but yeah. I get it. I get it. I love what's your favorite thing? Are Because like I look forward to when the carnitas or usually when the chorizo comes back, that's when I'm like making a beeline for it because that chorizo is really good. <laughs> I'm all about the guacamole. Like, I will have guacamole on mine, and then Dr. Glory Hog doesn't eat his. So, like, I will take his, and then sometimes, like, our little glory bears, you know, they don't eat theirs, and I'll take theirs. And then it's just like, basically, I just eat a bunch of guacamole at Chipotle. That's all I do. <laughs> now, do you ever make it yourself? Burritos? Yes. <laughs> guacamole? <laughs> oh, guacamole? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. You know, okay. I used to uh, make a lot of guacamole and things, but now board games take up a like the majority of my time and I have to pay me people to make guacamole for me. So, oh, okay. you know, it's plus it tastes those... better if somebody makes it for you. <laughs> you know, I, I can get behind that. Although, you know, <laughs> I don't know. There's something about you know, guacamole is one of those things that it's just, it's good and it's messy to make. You know, I'm not yes. bringing out a mortar and pestle. I'm in there and I'm just, <laughs> I'm just squeezing it like a, a tub of toothpaste just got completely hammered. It's like, oh, that's just so much fun. So <laughs> I do a potato masher and I mash okay. mine up with a potato masher. <laughs> So one of the restaurants I worked at, we used to make it by the tub. And when I say the tub, I'm not lying. When I it was, It's what we called a Lexan. That was this big. And it would take probably like three cases, four cases a day to go in there. And like what we ended up having to do was we ended up using a baker's screen. And, and we just pushed the guacamole through that. And that kind of like pre-diced it for you. <laughs> but, but man, your hands were so sore after you just kept, you know, you were just sitting there making this. But you know what? Nothing beats like when, it, when it's really fresh and the lime is like. Oh, nice. I know. Oh. But, so good, right? Right. But we got to get controversial, though. Do you like your guacamole spicy or not? Yes. Yes. I, I have to have all the spice. Like I live in the Southwest, so all right. everything I eat is spicy. <laughs> <laughs> That's completely fair. I, I totally get it, but it, it needs some diced jalapenos in there. The weird yeah. one, the weird one is, and, and I've heard this from um, some Mexican people who showed me their way to do it. They like to add sour cream to it. Oh like, yeah, you know what? That waters it down though. I don't get don't give me any sour cream in there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I get it. I'm I not get, doing that. I, I get what it's doing. It's it's doing kind of what the lime juice does. It's bringing the acid and keeping it from browning up and all that. But I just oh, I just I can't get there. It's just just not no. working for me. No. No. Yeah, no. I'm all about, you know, jalapenos. You get your spices in there, you get your onions in there, tomatoes, like you just mix it all up. It's super great. I knew we'd get along. <laughs> I totally knew see, it. see, now we can have guacamole and beer. 
<laughs> is there anything better? Like, just give me chips and guacamole, and I'm like, I am a right? very happy person. Very happy. <laughs> I can totally get behind that. Speaking of, are you drinking anything? I, I usually intro to that, but I just kind of jumped right into you know, it. You know, I totally thought about it. I was going to, but then I got sidetracked along the way. But yeah, I was thinking to myself, I was like, oh man, like it's part of like being on the show. You're like, all right, I got to make myself look all nice and professional and I got to have a drink. I just like this you know <laughs> but i forgot i'm sorry yeah yeah well we we had to um you, you kind of missed it but i have a canadian dan is helping us out tonight so he's kind of um you know he, he kind of made mine usually dan just shows up with beer it's you know i think it's the only reason i keep doing the show because you know i get beer <laughs> every other week and i get to hang out with dan so i think that right there i think that's so you get the, bribed bribed to do the show you're like well i can't do the show without at least a beer yeah don't we all know i mean we're getting bribed on some level for something right like either either it's well if i buy i can buy more games right that'll that'll work you know you, you make all these little deals if i get absolutely more beer. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah a whole show, exactly. So I can just buy games. Yeah. yeah. Now I need to make a show about beer. So that's what. <laughs> then I, I need to get all the to beer. <laughs> <laughs> tried to do beer and and comedy and board games, and I'm kind of like I'll, I'll find the happy middle ground. But mm -hmm. yeah, Anheuser Busch isn't knocking down the doors anytime soon. So dang that's it. Cool. Well, neither is Chipotle for me. So I mean, it's their loss. It's their loss. Well, it totally is. <laughs> You know what it is? They just don't want to lose you as a customer. That's the problem. <laughs> That's right. I all the money I spend on all those burritos. <laughs> exactly. And you get and you upcharge to the, the, the guacamole on top the, of it. Yeah, all the guacamole, yeah. I mean you're trying to get them to franchise in London for crying out loud. So I mean, come on. Like Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> they know what's going on. Totally know what's going oh, on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at what point, I know your gaming career started pretty early on. When was that? Okay. Well, let's see here. I've worked with Steve Jackson Games for, I think, like 12-ish years or so now. So you were, like, and in the I... hobby before, like, that was, like, everybody in, in, who has a camera, an audio mic, and lights to be, <laughs> you were doing it. <laughs> Long before. Absolutely. That. Absolutely. I went ahead and started as a MIB, which is like the demonstration team of okay. Steve Jackson games. So I would just go to conventions and just teach people how to play games. And a lot of times, you know, you teach so many games, then you get into the convention uh, for free, like on a free ticket. And I would visit all the places like in my area, in my city. And then it like branched out and I would do like cities like not in mine, you know, here and there. And all of a sudden it like finally branched out to where I was going to Gen Con. I was going to Origins and Steve Jackson wow. brought me on full time and stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I'm so excited. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a very long process of going through and just, you know, teaching people games, which is where my heart is in the mm -hmm. very end of it. You know, it's like, I love interacting with people and playing games with them and showing them cool new stuff to play. Right. Awesome. <laughs> So were you you were around then pre like pre ogre time, I would guess. Not not pre ogre time because that was then like that was in the eighties ish. Big but box ogre, let me rephrase. Yes, that. sorry. No, yes. oh yeah, no pre big box <laughs> ogre. That big box ogre is ridiculously huge. <laughs> like that it was is. insane. You could you could <laughs> use it as a playpen for a small child once you're done unpacking the game. It's it's right about that big. Yes. Absolutely. That was so crazy watching that like come out on Kickstarter. I was like, oh my gosh, like board games are going somewhere when you can get a gigantic box like that funded on Kickstarter, right? Yeah. And I don't, I don't think people actually knew how big it was until it showed up. And then all of a sudden these boxes that are like, you know, three and a half feet long and 80 pounds of all, I, I'm exaggerating on the weight at least. <laughs> But I don't think big, you are. I don't think you are. I think it was like 40 pounds. I mean, it was, it was. heavy. That thing was, you had to ship that thing freight. You didn't get that like UPS or anything. That was a beast. It was, it was crazy. It was a beast. And I feel like 
that started my giant Kickstarter shipments that ended up coming to my house because man, there's been several others since then that I'm just like, yeah, I could fit like an entire child in this box, you know, <laughs> like that is just insane. <laughs> well, you know, if you ever need to like, you know, hide a baby from Pharaoh, you know, you can always take the, you know, the Gloomhaven box and kind of put Moses down the river if you need to. Is that, I think that's, that's what, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like that's what the gamer version would be. Right. Like, we we put our baby in the in the oh in the little gloomhaven box. Send him downstream. Some gamer will receive them and teach them well. <laughs> oh wow, that's that's something special. That's that's an image right there. Like if somebody doesn't make right? that a Halloween costume next year, I think I'm gonna be disappointed. Oh my god, that would be hysterical. that would be amazing. Who are you? I'm like, oh well, that that that's Moses. That's what the board gaming Moses. Okay. The yeah gamer Moses. Camera Moses. There you go. Could totally see it happening. But so so you started with Steve Jackson Games. And when was the point where you said, you know what, I enjoy doing this so much. I want to share it with the world and put out all this video content that you do. It really kind of just creeped up on me because I was with Steve Jackson games and I was like, all right, well, how am I going to advertise more stuff for them? Because I'm going to be showing off games and I want people to come to my game demo. So I'm going to start with Instagram and I'm going to start doing Facebook and I'm going to start doing Twitter and stuff. And from there, it was like every tiny little step kept on <laughs> leading me in that direction. You know, it's like, all right, well, you know what? Let's do a podcast because we talk about all of these, you know, Kickstarters all the time. Let's just add that in and then I'll create more promotion for me going to conventions and demoing mm -hmm. games for people. And then all of a sudden it was like, you know what? I could probably do videos because I teach people games like all the time. So, you know, I'm good at talking to people. I've done panels mm -hmm. and stuff like I can do this. And eventually it just rolled over into me doing a live video cast weekly so <laughs> like it just it just happened very suddenly I was like oh, okay I guess I'm doing this I have the equipment so <laughs> and like next thing you know you're just like oh let's let's just turn on the camera and stream tonight let's let's do let's, yep. we're gonna play we're gonna play from the stream so at what point did um did you kind of because I imagine this is your journey and then at what point did uh, Dr. Glory Hogg kind of get roped and pulled into this <laughs> world of yours? Because obviously he, he's there with you pretty much every he time. He is. Yes, he's he's been such a good sport about everything because in the beginning it was like, okay, you know, she's getting all this recording equipment. That's a hobby. And this is part of the hobby. And, this part, and it just dawned on him, I think, within this last year. And he's like, holy crap. Like, this is like a thing that you're doing right now. Like, this is serious business. And so he's always been like here and there and kind of helping out here and there. But this year, he actually totally 100% committed to everything. And he, now he's like full time trying to help me out with everything, which I totally appreciate not doing everything alone. But yeah, it it snuck up on him, too. He was like, wait a second. How many followers do we have now? Like, <laughs> this is getting in some crazy zones now. I expected like this much now right. it's like it's kind of bordering on this much, you know. So yeah, it was it was shocking for him. <laughs> nice, nice. I think that's a um, let's let's take a moment here because I think this is a great place to pause because of course this just opens the door for a ton of questions that we're going to get back to after the break. So we're going to be right back after this. Pontifications with Patrick Hillier. Which country's capital has the fastest growing population? Ireland. Every day it's Dublin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, she is still here with me. And believe it or not, tape is rolling. I don't know. You know, this is, <laughs> this is something new to, you know, she's like, when is this going to go up? And I'm like, well, for us, it's going to go up in two days. So it's like, you know, it's like if you lived in Australia on Earth 2 as far as time for, <laughs> time zones go. But Right? You have to do mastering like calculations in your head for this. <laughs> yeah. It's like if, if I didn't have Google Calendar to send an invite to people who live outside the U.S., I would never be able to to do the show because I – I'm sorry. I – 
it's very timey wimey when you have to do the show with somebody who's having breakfast tomorrow. Like that just Yeah, can and there was like daylight savings time too, like that we crossed over and Right. I was like, oh my gosh, hold on. We I need to make sure on which time I'm going with this because like there's going to be daylight savings on the weekend. Like. <laughs> You were you were on the ball and you're like and and you don't even have it and you're you're in Arizona so you don't even have the time Right. zone right so it's just like <laughs> yeah. it was very confusing you're like I think it'll be seven o'clock your time and I'm like well I'm glad you know because I, my favorite my favorite when it comes to time zones was I got um, when we had Matthew Jude from the UK on and he actually sent me a message. In the morning, he goes, we will be on your show in eight hours, correct? <laughs> Just to make sure, like, take time. Doing Like, a countdown. UTC minus six, whatever. It's like, no. <laughs> So, I mean, that's good <laughs> I was, I'm like, you know what? That's smart. So anytime I have somebody international now, I, I kind of do the same thing. I'm like, just so you know, because... <laughs> Time's confusing. It really is. super confusing yeah yeah it gets it's too much that's why I, that's why I live where I live I don't need any time zones or anything like that I'm just in one place everybody else is weird <laughs> You're so forward thinking in, in Arizona. I just, every time, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's nice to kind of do the fall forward, but it's your animals. It messes with your animals. Like, you know, I, I'm so lazy that, A, I have a cat, and he's a gray bee too, by the way, he's a little gray boy. He's never, he's never come down and run over my set like he does, like she does on Well, yours. yeah. <laughs> I leave the door open. He could do it if he wanted, but he would probably just be over here chewing on the plant and Camera shy. <laughs> yeah, not even, he's just, whatever. He's, he's, he's the, the epitome of a cat. And it's just like. I have them on an automatic feeder that's like Wi-Fi. And so it like 530, it'll feed him. And he's down there staring at it at 430 going, come on, man, where's my stuff? <laughs> I'm like, bud, you got like, you got like Oh my an hour, gosh. you know, he, Oh he's. my gosh. Well, And. yeah, that really messes him up because he's over there with his watch. He's like, hmm, hold on. Yeah. So it really makes Pretty me sure feel. I should have been fed. I, yeah. Well, he got a couple bits for his trouble, but. You know, I can't imagine like having a dog in the morning. It's like sometimes, sometimes he gets a little like, you know, five o'clock. He's kind of like, he wants attention and whatnot. But for the most part, the mornings are fine. But if you had a dog and that clock, that must be a whole nother ball of wax, right? Because like they got to go out and you're like, that's not an alarm. You can snooze very often. You can get away with that No. a little bit, but you're going to, you're going to pay the price You get if you get you don't. this the stare where it's like laser like stare like and like little no nose whistles and you're like what is that noise? Oh my god. Is that a tea kettle? <laughs> No, it, that's the right? dog. No. It's the dog. It needs to go out. I'm awake now. <laughs> Wow. No, I just don't get it. But speaking of streaming and time zone and all that stuff, I mean, you guys are pretty regular with your streaming and your time, right? So you Oh, guys absolutely. get out there. Yeah. Now, have you found Yeah, we that do. that's... that's necessary to kind of grow it and maintain it and things. Especially for live streaming, because people expect, well, it's just like a television show, you Right. know, well, back when there wasn't the internet doing television shows, you know, people expect you to be there at a certain time every week. And if you break that, you're just going to not get anywhere as fast you know you have to be Right. consistent with what you're doing with that and luckily i mean i love talking about kickstarter so i'm pretty consistent in checking that every weekly so <laughs> like it just led right into the show weekly i was like all right i'm on this i'm always on kickstarter we're gonna talk about this weekly Might as well, <laughs> right? You're already doing the homework. right and that was kind of it i'm like man i am researching these i'm figuring out what options to buy over here like i'm just going to share that with people and get their opinions on stuff too which is always fantastic as well you know It's like it's it's pretty much I think every show or podcast starts with a spreadsheet somewhere, whether it's, you know, things you're researching, games you have, games you want to talk about. There's a spreadsheet somewhere that you have in your home. That could be the next great show. And 
you know. That's a hundred percent true. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're, you know, putting all that useful knowledge somewhere. And then like, if you just take that one little step and share it with the world, somebody's going to find it interesting. Somebody out there, somebody has the same obsession as you. I promise you. <laughs> there you go. So what has been like, if we can look back at like streaming life, cause you've been doing this for several years now, what has probably been like some of the, the crazier moments that you've had during during streams? Well, I mean, you mentioned my cat and that's probably the <laughs> hardest thing, you know, because one, you have to remember to always to put her up and then I, I don't know. I, your viewers probably don't know, but my cat is like aggressively lovable like she needs to be aggressive in your face like if we're streaming and the door is closed she's straight up trying to break down the door to get in here okay and one that can be really distracting but two when she does make it up on the set luckily all of my viewers like enjoy seeing her and stuff but there's nothing worse than doing a demo for something for either a board game or for Steve Jackson games, I'm showing off a product and like I'm trying to rearrange the cat and she's crawling all <laughs> over my shoulder. And I'm like, so these dice right here are fantastic. And you know, she's up in my neck. Like that's probably, that's the craziest it ever gets. And that's bad on my part because like, I don't keep her out all the time, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, if you end up falling upon that, like, I'm sorry, it's not professional, but man, it's at least you guys enjoy her <laughs> what's not to love you know what it's funny i um i i know we got i think it's a gray cat thing okay gus isn't necessarily down here but but he has these times when he's just like he needs attention and he's just gonna yes he's just gonna hop on the counter and he is totally that cat will be like flip you don't, you don't need that anymore <laughs> like it's been there for a week and now you're just like yeah. Nope. That's gone now. That's you know, like I, the level of hate. Yeah. Like the ghost <laughs> that make eye contact and just like, well, like <laughs> right off the table. Right. Attention's <laughs> right over here. Like you just, he's very much like on my terms, my terms only like to yeah. the point where you could almost leave your hand there and he will do the work himself. Like he's like, no, you don't know how to do it right. I'm just going to do it for you. So you don't, you don't mess it up. He's teaching you is like no it's like this how many yeah. times do i have to tell you human? he's cat explaining it to me <laughs> he totally is i get it now i'm i'm sorry for everybody i've ever done that to i get it but you know it's just like, you were the... doing it wrong the entire time <laughs> my favorite is is when he decides to to use your your finger as a toothbrush so he starts rubbing his teeth on you and then all of a sudden he just like bites once and he looks up like <laughs> oops <laughs> sorry <laughs> No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He'll be on set at some point, I'm sure. But, you know, if you ever see these, the, the plants move back here, they, they start everyone... shuffling a little. <laughs> yeah. No. We also have a pretty large house. So he has plenty of places to go hide and, and do all that stuff in. It's not like we live in a tiny apartment that he's just has no choice. So. In the middle of everything. <laughs> right. So. Let, let's go down the, the 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 streaming craziness step. So if we, we that was like some of the crazy stuff, what has been some of the funnest stuff that you've had happen? Like maybe with comments or things like that? Yeah, comments are definitely one of them. There, and I feel like it just happened a few streams ago. We had a very interactive crowd going on back and forth with everybody. And we were talking about some Kickstarters and we got sidetracked, of course. And by mid show, I was like, cry laughing. <laughs> like I could not control myself. I was laughing so hard, like tears coming down and everything. Dr. Glory hog, like couldn't help himself. He was like falling over in his chair and just having moments like that and being able to enjoy that with everybody was <laughs> so much fun. Oh my gosh. That just, it made my entire day, you know, like, being able to interact with people like that online. It was fantastic. I laughed so hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, it's we, we don't do streams very often, but when you have a, an interactive, fun stream, especially especially when you have like an off sense of humor, you know, like a lot yes. of those streamers <laughs> do, right? And somebody gets that and they chime in, you're just like, you get me. Like, <laughs> 
And that was exactly it. It was like the chat was just going perfectly. Everybody was super sarcastic, <laughs> but like professional sarcastic okay. where you're like, yes, yes. Oh, we have professionals in the chat right now giving us <laughs> advice about this stream. Okay. And it was just, it was perfect. Everybody got it. Everybody got the show, you know, and we were able to share those moments, which was so much fun. <laughs> So what regular shows are you running these days? Like if we were to say log into one of the myriad of channels that you have, when would we expect to see you on? Well, Fridays at noon mountain time, we have our Kickstarter show, which is usually our biggest show and we get the most people there. And we specifically talk about new Kickstarters happening that week and if we would buy them or not, which is my favorite thing, because sometimes we have, well, we have a strategic gamer and a Meritrash gamer and then a Euro gamer there. So everybody's opinions are different. And then we take our opinions from our viewers and what they think and what they're buying and stuff. And it becomes like this collective, like, how do you feel about this campaign? Or maybe somebody played this thing or maybe somebody heard something about this and that's one of my favorite shows to do. And then quite recently, over the last, I want to say, month or so, we've really been starting to do a lot of playthroughs, which I love. And we're going to circle back around with playing some of the Kickstarters that we did end up purchasing and came in and giving our final thoughts on them. And I'm doing app-based gameplay as well because I play a lot of board games on apps now and I love being able to play with people around the world and stuff you know if if I have like somebody that I talk to and interact with on stream I can just look them up on you know this game and play with them in person and that is so much fun so I am so excited to start doing more of that content as well because I want to bring that step one more like that one step further with my viewers and go okay sure. well this week we're going to pick somebody from the audience and we're going to play with them and that would be like so much fun to do you know right now are you just trying to focus on like you know iphone and tablets or are you trying to use the switch at all or how is that working out yes so okay i haven't done a switch stream yet but i just i've actually just got all the equipment today for it so ah. i'm super excited about doing that yeah we want to do what is it the uh, Raiders of the North Sea. Okay. Yeah, because I got that on my Switch, and I was like, oh, my gosh, it looks so amazing on Switch. Like, I, I want to do that. And I play a lot of games on my phone. Mm -hmm. Like, we did Chronicles of Crime, and we had okay. our live audience interact and tell us, you know, what they think the story, where they think the story was headed oh, and who, you know, killed who in this thing and everything. But, yeah, so we're definitely going to be doing a little bit of – I mean, they're putting them on PC now, on PS4, on Switch. I mean, I'm a gamer at heart, so I have all those things already here. So I just right. needed like one little thing to make that bridged, you know, to go further. <laughs> Makes sense. So if you were to go back a couple of years when you were just starting out streaming, what advice would you give yourself then that you might have benefited the most from? Wow. Okay. That's a really tough question. <laughs> well, it, it's, I'm, a, I'm a... It's, a, it's a quietly <laughs> veiled, if somebody's getting into streaming, what pitfalls falls should you avoid? I guess is the, the alternate think, question to it. <laughs> yeah, I think the big thing is that being consistent part, you know. Before we started doing the video cast, we did a podcast, and we had a lot of viewership that crossed over from the podcast to the video cast with that. But... The fact that we put up something every single Friday for the last, you know, three or four years now, right. it's it makes a big difference, you know, and people I mean, I, I'll go into conventions and people will still mention the podcast that we did. And they're like, man, we really loved that content and stuff like we appreciate you making this. And you just you get forgotten if you don't keep being continuous with what you're putting out and just making sure that, you know, you can pick just one thing. And that's what we kind of started with. We picked one thing and we're like, all right, we're just going to be consistent on this one thing. We're not going to do a ton of other things, but as long as you're right. consistent in that one thing, like you will have viewers, people will come to your channels and stuff and they'll get interactive and everything. You'll get to know people, you know, and that makes a big difference. Absolutely. It's, um, it, it's very nice when people know that they're like, Oh, I know that this will be there waiting for me. Either it's Friday morning because they didn't get to watch it live or, you know, lunch on Thursday. They can like, you know, sit down, put it on their phone and grab a bite at the same time of Chipotle. 
and with their um, <laughs> and, right <laughs> and play along with the home game, right? That, That's right. They get their Chipotle burritos and watch our show. <laughs> no, it, it totally makes sense. So, what do you, what do you envision next? Like, obviously, we talked a little bit about the um, the adding in electronic games. Do you do you have any like big plans that you'd like to do, or are you just kind of enjoying it day by day? I think that the electronic gaming portion is definitely where I see myself doing like my next new big thing because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of board game companies are going to go in that direction and there's not a lot of coverage for it right now. Like there's a little bit of coverage, but not as much as I think there should be with that because you can't always find somebody to come to your game table every week, but you can find somebody on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. At any time of the day, it doesn't matter if it's 3 a.m. in the morning, somebody's going to play some games with you, okay? <laughs> and I think that it also branches and brings over people who are playing other video games into this whole new world where you're like, oh my gosh, like there's these other games out there that I can play in person. I'm just hoping, I'm like trying to collectively get more people into the hobby, you know? <laughs> I'm like, I need more people to play with. So eventually, maybe we can get some of these video gamers over here, or maybe we can get some of these app you know, based game players over here and get them into the hobby. So I feel like the app-based gameplay is definitely where I want to go. And then also just continuing like my comedic sort of crazy mind and the way it works. I like making like little <laughs> tiny skits of things. And I hope to do a lot more of those in the future too. And keeping them short, but just kind of funny, you know? They are, they're always a lot of fun to do. But they are, they fall in that category. You and I were talking before the show about, you know, sometimes people don't understand all the prep work that goes in. You know, those yes. little skits take a ridiculous <laughs> amount of work sometimes. You know, they are not easy. So. No, yeah, because you do, you have to get like the sets and the props, and then like you have to get if there's people involved in it and stuff. Yeah, it does take a lot longer to go through all of that but i have so much fun doing it it's it's on my wish list of things to continue <laughs> uh, i totally get it it's it's fun i i try to do them and sometimes i come up with them and then i'm like there's no way i can pull that off like that's just not gonna happen like I, my next one like i want to do and i'm like Either I need to learn how to do some graphic software because I don't think I, I think I'm going to outgrow a green screen because it but I think it's hysterical, but it'll be like, it's going to be so much work. You just need to go super low tech then. So if like if you want a dinosaur in there, you just get like your popsicle stick and your dinosaur and be like, Rawr. a diorama <laughs> might work. You, <laughs> you may have just unlocked it. I can probably make like mini yes. figs in a little animator program and do that. Right. <laughs> stop motion video i've always wanted to try that that's right everybody goes down to lego form all of a sudden and then you do a little scene you're like and now back to us <laughs> all right I'm, I'm gonna put the disclaimer out there um it's probably gonna have to take place in the star wars universe because that's all the minifigs that i have <laughs> <laughs> And, and Hans and Leia awesome. are glued behind a picture frame because I, I made one of those, you know, I love you and I know. I, I did that with my yes. mate. So, so they're, they're locked oh, away. Oh, that's behind. awesome. In case of emergency, <laughs> break glass. Yeah, totally. That's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I love Legos. Who doesn't like Legos and stuff? I, Gosh. <laughs> so much fun. So much fun. All right. So this is the part of the show where you get to tell everybody where on the internet that they can find you and consume all this awesome stuff. Yay! <laughs> all right. Well, you guys can find me at gloryhound.com. That is my website. And from there, you can get to pretty much anything else that I have. Um, Glory Hound presents on Facebook at Glory Hound. And that's Glory Hound with two Ds, guys, because Glory Hound, oh, here she is, see? Oh, <laughs> Glory Hound, the band was taken, <laughs> right? <laughs> and let's see here, uh, Glory Hound on Instagram as well. So come on, you need to, you need to be, you need to be professional right now, Kitty. Gosh, okay. <laughs> well, she'd be see, the aggressively only one. lovable right here, okay? She needs to be up in there. <laughs> yep. She needs the nuzzles. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Awesome. So this has been a ton of fun. And I'm, I'm glad she came out right at the end there. She just had to come out. Right. And say hi. She's like, hey, we have to say hi. We have to be on camera. We're, we're famous. 
She's a famous cat. <laughs> They're all famous in their own mind, believe me. Right, and that's it. She's a diva, man. She needs to be up in here. <laughs> yep, totally. Total love bug. But this has been a blast. I appreciate you coming on so much and making the time for our little show. Are you interested in coming back next week and playing a little game? Absolutely. That would be so much fun. All right. I think we'll have to do that. So, and then maybe at some point I can come on your show and I can play an app with you. Who knows? That would so. be super fantastic. Oh my right. gosh. That'd be great. Crossover <laughs> extreme. Yeah. Yay. So. <laughs> It's like when Scooby Doo went on. No, when the Globe Trotters went on <laughs> Scooby Doo. It's all over again. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on. Thank you at home for watching. And thank you, Canadian Dan, for making my drink for me tonight. Uh, I will see you all next time. And be sure you have some friends and a, and a cat running around when you game all night. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Join us next week when we play a game with the guests. If you enjoy our content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Be sure to follow us on all forms of social media. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook are the best ways possible. Simply find us by searching for Game All Night Show. And of course, check out our website at GameAllNightShow.com. This week and each week is made possible through the generous support of donors like these. Be sure to subscribe below and check out our latest videos. Oh,